Ancient Greece was at the heart of the rise of Western civilization, architecturally, culturally, and artistically. Throughout the ancient Greek world, sites have been discovered that reveal clues to history, mythology, art, culture, and ideas of people. Architecture, symbols, clothing, sculpture, writings, and art all provide a glimpse of ancient Greek life. The most recognized remnants of ancient Greece are architectural, like the Parthenon. But throughout ancient times, pottery is the most common material recovered in excavations, and Greeks had much admiration for pottery. This map shows a terracotta factory discovered in the city of Corinth. Located at the western edge of the walled area of Corinth, the Potter's Quarter was a complex of workshops and domestic quarters used by potters for three centuries, from the 7th century until the 4th century BCE. Excavations in the ancient city of Corinth reveal that the ancient Greek black figure pottery technique was developed here around 700 BCE. We can see the evolution of the black figure technique in these early shards of pottery. It evolved from geometric designs to animals and then to the human figure. Basically, the black figure technique entailed applying black pigmented clay slip and vinegar to a vessel to give it a slight relief effect. Details were carved away with a sgraffito-like tool and touches of red and white slip were added for details. Borders and edges were often added using repetition. 20,000 black figure vessels survive today as an evidence of ancient Greek ideas, beliefs, artistry, and social life. These vessels are also a really important tool in determining the chronology of ancient Greece. Artists take into consideration so many aspects of the past and the present when creating art with a personal connection. Most artists incorporate ideas from the past to offer a glimpse of cultural importance, personal voice and expression, and to deliver messages through symbols and through forms. As a ceramics artist and painter, I usually create a series of work around an idea or a theme. I contemplate ideas that are important to me, and I'm influenced by topics that I've studied, events that have shaped my life, and images and media I've been exposed to. I'm drawn to the way the Greeks told stories visually with pottery, and then added solid glazed areas around those stories. I am also intrigued by what artists created that led to this advanced technique of black figure. The basic shapes of early Corinthian black figure pottery have interesting geometrical shapes that lend themselves well to modern designs on clay. I incorporate some of the Greek black figure techniques into my work just by blocking out the main shapes on each side of my design, glazing them solid and then firing them separately. Then I concentrate on the actual design that I've blocked out. Similar to the Greek black figure design, I draw my designs with pencil or charcoal first, then I glaze them. It does take three coats, so it takes a lot of patience. And then I go and clean up some areas, and sometimes I feather them a little bit to make them soft. Then I go in and I add my layers of glaze to the shapes on the inside. So these aren't just shapes, it's actually ideas and topics and things that I consider in this series of work. For example, this series is the chromosome series, and so every project that I'm working on, whether it's a painting or whether it's a pottery piece, has a personal connection. The chromosome series explores the human connection to our 23 pairs of chromosomes. Each work is very different, nothing is the same, everyone might have a similar concept or design, 
but I might add certain things. For example, in this part I'm adding small dots of glazes similar to the Corinthian pottery piece or fragment that you saw on the left there. So I am inspired by things that I see and connections with the past. This series also deals with a personal connection with the past because it deals with the 23 pairs of chromosomes that most people have, but the details in this pottery piece in particular also delve into the idea that not everyone has 23 pairs of chromosomes. So after I've filled in my areas with my glazes and I've blocked out all of the designs that I'm going to add, I get a very small brush and I start outlining the details to bring out those circles because the circles are really important because they are the representation of these pairs of chromosomes with the number 23. So each piece will usually have 23 circles or 23 shapes that are combined in a variety of different manners to represent different parts of my chromosomes or a different parts of other people's chromosome makeup. I use other techniques also. I don't always block off certain areas. Sometimes I'll block off the entire ceramics piece and then I will paint on my designs directly without drawing them first. I find this has a lot of freedom and I find it quite enjoyable. Sometimes I never know what I'm going to get and I never know what the glazes are going to do if I'm trying new glazes like I am here. So for this small cup I'm thinking about some early black figure technique. I decided that with this vessel in mind and the second one here I want to do some repetition. So I'm thinking about Greek black figure pottery in the early parts of the development of pottery and I'm thinking about adding a border at the top so I gave it a go. I really enjoy using paper pattern techniques. So what I do is I take newsprint and I draw my shapes and then I cut them out. Then I take water and a brush and I apply my paper pattern to my clay piece. And here you can see that I'm smoothing it over with a brush. I'm thinking about the pottery from the Corinthian early era and then I'm putting those paper patterns onto my vase that I've created. My next step is to draw on the areas that I'm going to block off where I really want to focus the viewer's attention onto my design. Then I get my glaze or my slip or my underglaze and I start painting. This time I'm painting the area opposite of what I did before on the plate. I'm actually painting the middle area. So what I'm doing is I'm creating these blocked off shapes. The reason I really like paper pattern is because it allows me to apply my design to a, the greenware stage of my pottery, glaze it, and essentially my design is completed and ready to be fired. Although this is not the technique of the black figure Greek vases, it is a different way of achieving the kind of connection with the past by creating this type of geometrical pottery that you see in the bottom left here. This is a method I use with my students, it's a method I use with my own work, and it's actually quite enjoyable. So the next stage is really fun. You take a needle tool and you remove the paper patterns and then it, the shapes that you've created appear underneath. They're not always perfect, so sometimes you have to take a scraffito tool or a needle tool and you just scrape away some of the areas. Sometimes that happens, the glaze seeps underneath, but that's fine. It's fixable.
Sgraffito techniques date way back before the Corinthian pottery. These beautiful shards of pottery found in Corinth really show the detail of the potter's hand coming in and clearing away areas with the Sgraffito tool. So with my pottery, sometimes I will use this technique and I will clear away circles or shapes in my pottery. I'm actually carving through the slip or the underglaze to reveal the shapes. If you look long enough at this pottery, you can imagine the artist carefully scraffitoing away these beautiful designs of this pottery. When I'm finished, I sign my name and add the date. It's a record of me. I always sign my work.